name is Eric Winand. Thank you for watching this video uh, where I'm going to show you how to make a uh, Microsoft Excel pivot chart that has both a stacked column and a grand total line. Uh, I, I uh, I had the problem that I wasn't able to make one of these and I googled around forever online and it seemed like it was not possible. It sounds like in Excel it's not innately possible and the workarounds I found online sacrificed the dynamic nature of the pivot chart which is the whole reason you've got the pivot chart. So copying and pasting values or using a power pivot uh, with cube formulas or get pivot data formulas all uh, sacrifice the um, the dynamic nature of pivot charts, so they weren't really uh, adequate. So uh, what I um, figured out was that we could superimpose a line pivot chart on top of a stacked column um, pivot chart and give the appearance of one pivot chart with a grand total line. And so that's what I did. I'm going to show you real quickly uh, exactly how to do that. So let's jump over and let's start fresh with um, our raw data. This is uh, raw data from QuickBooks Online Sample Company. Uh, I do, I'm a CPA and I do finance and accounting consulting for small and medium sized businesses that use the cloud, cloud accounting software packages like uh, QuickBooks Online or Xero or NetSuite um, and this type of graph in the dashboards that we create is uh, very useful. Uh, so this is the data that we need. Um, we just need months and years, not every single day in our pivot table. And I'm going to make a little bit of room over here for our pivot chart. Um, before I create the pivot chart, I'm just going to create a timeline and a couple of slicers here um, to test the dynamic aspects of the pivot table. And so these kind of dashboards are really useful um, on your financial data uh, once you've got it organized um, once you're doing your bookkeeping and your accounting um, appropriately um, you can um, create dashboards like this that will help you uh, better manage your business and that's what we do for clients um, once we get them organized, um, we're able to help them uh, make better decisions. And so there's the slicers we would want in our um, dashboard. And so now let's insert the stack bar pivot chart. Um, and we're going to drop it right over here. And you can see our dates are on the wrong axis, so we're just going to switch the row and column. And since we're going to use slicers to filter our data, we're going to hide all the buttons. And since we've got negative data, I'm going to tell my label to go low so it doesn't overlap if you have my negative data. So that's the, the pivot chart that um, we're all familiar with. And so how do we add the grand total line? First step is shrink the plot area. And this is important. And I'm going to tell you why in just a second. But for now, I'll take my word for it. Shrink the plot area. And if we're going to superimpose um, one pivot chart on another, our second pivot chart actually is going to come from a separate pivot table. And the reason is because this pivot table, we're going to remove any breakdowns that we have. In our case, it's um, general ledger accounts, um, functional income and expenses. Um, in your case, it might be any other uh, set of data, but you can remove any of the breakdowns you have and just be left with just the total. And then when you have just the total, 
uh, run a pivot a line pivot chart uh, like this one and we're gonna make it the same height and width as our existing stack bar and then I'm gonna just clean it up to be able to superimpose it. We're basically going to get rid of just about everything and no fill and no outline. And once I do that, I'm going to align it uh, with our existing chart. And so now there's one sitting exactly on top of the other. They're different, though, because this one doesn't have a legend. And so the plot area is different. So this is where the art comes in. Um, I don't know exactly a scientific way to do this. But what we do is we set one plot area right on top of the other. And when you do this, you can get it um, exactly right. Um, in, our, in this case, I'm going to um, get it pretty close. And then I delete my labels. And I like to add my data label above. And now I've got the pivot chart that um, is dynamic with my total. And so you can see here both um, the line and the account um, pivot chart are uh, responding. And the reason is because they have the same filter connections. So if one of your pivot tables is responding, the other isn't to any filter changes you're making. You've got to have them both um, behaving equally so that that total line uh, corresponds to the stacked column. You want to check your filter connections on your pivot table. So just go to your pivot table and go to filter connections and make sure that they both have the same filter connections. You can also go to your timeline or your slicer and check your report connections, and each one should be connected to both reports. So that's the dynamic pivot table with the grand total line. Uh, that's basically the workaround that you need to know. Uh, if you want to stay tuned, there's one gotcha here, and you can see that when you've got negative data in your data set, your scale of your axes can get misaligned, and then the charts um, don't have the same axis, and um, it doesn't look quite right, which you can see uh, is happening here. So what's going on here is that um, the axes that we originally aligned perfectly um, got misaligned because our line chart only goes down to zero, but our uh, column chart goes down to negative two. So you can just let that be and just use some formatting on your data labels to uh, be able to see those totals. Or if that's a problem for you, you can bound um, the axes. So you can see here that this one is on auto, but if we type in minus two, it'll bound it to minus two. And if we have the same bounds on both of our charts, then the axes will always be in the same scale. So I'm gonna delete that one again, and I'm gonna align top and left these again. And now you can see that our line is right on top of the columns, uh, right where it should be. So once you uh, explore your data some, you'll notice that you end up with some big white space here because you fixed this at minus two, normally it's dynamic, and that would go to zero. But that's one of the, the downsides of doing it this way, but the upside is you've got the, uh, you can still use um, slicers and pivots and expand and collapse the data um, in any way you like. Uh, so that is the, um, that is the, the methodology. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me a note, comment on the video, or hunt me down on my LinkedIn profile and ask me any questions about uh, finance, accounting, or Excel, for that matter. Again, my name is uh, Eric Winand, and I appreciate you watching the video.